The history of Ottawa is often entwined with fact and legend. As the years pass, fiction can appear as true as the real story. One such story is the land dispute between Captain Le Breton and Lord Dalhousie, and how it supposedly impacted the location of the Rideau Canal. The most recognized but untrue account of the land dispute is that the Governor General of British North America at the time, George Ramsey, Earl of Dalhousie, or Dalhousie if you're from Ottawa, wished to purchase Lot 40 in Nepean Township in order to construct the Rideau Canal along a flat, marshy area known as Dow's Great Swamp, running along what is now Preston Street and connecting to the Ottawa River at Richmond Landing just below the Chartier Falls. In hearing this, Captain Le Breton purchased the property and sold it back to Dalhousie for an inflated price. However, the only part that is true is that there was indeed a land dispute, but it was not because of the canal. In 1820, Dalhousie wished to purchase Lot 40 in order to build a government storage facility at Richmond Landing, as this was the landing place for military soldiers settling in Richmond, Ontario. At a dinner, Dalhousie informed his men of his plans and instructed them to pass along information regarding any sales of this lot. According to Dalhousie, Captain Le Breton was in attendance and used this information to his advantage. In December 1820, Le Breton quickly travelled to Brockville and with the help of Livia Sherwood, bought the property at auction from an indebted man named Robert Randall for £499. He then offered to sell the property to Dalhousie for £3,000 an amount Le Breton claimed was half what the property was worth. Upon hearing what Le Breton had done, Dalhousie was enraged and refused to ever buy the property from him. The captain became a pariah with his fellow soldiers, despite attempts to clear his name. He also stated that the sale was public, and he was in his right to purchase it. Dalhousie, however, continued to claim that Le Breton's purchase of Lot 40 was illegal. According to Le Breton, Dalhousie sent two of his men to squat on his property as a means of intimidation. When Le Breton tried to remove them from his property and threatened legal action, Dalhousie paid for the men's defense out of his own pocket. Eventually, Dalhousie took the battle to court in 1828. However, the court found in favor of Sherwood and Le Breton. After this, Le Breton began selling off his property in parcels, and the area later took his name to become known as Le Breton Flats. In the correspondences between Dalhousie and Le Breton, there is no mention of placing the Rideau Canal through Dow's Great Swamp to Richmond Landing, or any mention of the canal whatsoever. So where did the story of moving the canal from Dow's Great Swamp originate? Well, it turns out that the swamp was mentioned a few times during the planning of the canal. As locations were being scouted for a possible entrance to the Otto River in 1826, one of the engineers on the project, John McTaggart, mentioned that placing the canal through Dow's Great Swamp might have been an ideal option, if not for the unstill waters found at Richmond Landing, just below the Chartier Falls. Richmond Landing was not the only location under consideration as a possible terminus for the Rideau Canal. The original surveys completed by Samuel Klaus in 1824 recommended the entrance be located at Rafting Bay, today known as Governor Bay. It was determined, however, the rock cliffs in this location would make it costly and difficult to construct the canal. Perhaps some of the confusion to the Dow's Great Swamp story occurred in 1826 when McTaggart recommended to Lieutenant Colonel John By, the lead engineer on the project, that a connection be constructed through the swamp to Lake Chartier, today known as Lac de Chêne. Although this had nothing to do with the course of the Rio Canal, McTaggart reasoned that this second canal would open up travel further up the Ottawa River where the population was just starting to grow. He also determined that only two locks would be needed for this connection as the difference in elevation was between 12 to 13 feet. However, as By was only commissioned to build a canal connecting Ottawa with Kingston for defense purposes, the plan was rejected. Although the initial land dispute was not about the Rideau Canal, the ideas of placing the canal through Dow's Great Swamp or Governor Bay were still raised as options. 
Imagine, downtown Ottawa could have been located at Le Breton Flats, or at what is now Rideau Hall. The Parliament buildings might have been atop one of the cliffs at either of these locations. The city also could have had a second canal parallel to the Sir John A. Macdonald Parkway. In the end, the final location for the Rideau Canal worked well for the capital of Canada. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. Or if you'd like to see more videos on the history of Ottawa, please hit the subscribe button 